everybody. I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and I would love to show you how you at home can create this adorable furry fox. All the fur, all the fox, all the eye that you could love. I'm going to explain to you every part of the process. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He makes sure to zoom in on the techniques and the things that I'm teaching so you are really up in the action. You can see and understand what I'm talking about. That way you understand the color mix. That way you understand the techniques and what you can understand you can do. Now, you can do this one painting, but you might notice that it is with other paintings. So this painting is part of a 30-part series. You're welcome to do one, but I would love to invite you to do all of them as they all kind of relate to each other. There's really nothing to do but get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me at the easel right now. I would love to show you how you can paint this. Today's colors are Thalo Blue, Mars Black, Burnt Sienna, Cad Yellow Medium, Cad Red Medium, Na Naples Yellow Light, Titanium White. We're going to start by painting our 8x8 eight eight canvas with a mixture of the Burnt Sienna and Mars Black. Just mix them together and paint the entire canvas this dark chocolate color. Be sure to dry it before we begin the gridding process. As soon as your surface is painted and dried, you can begin the gridding process. I'm gonna use a tool called the T-square and this chalk tool, and I'm gonna make a one inch by one inch grid on this canvas. I'm gonna just go across my ruler and every inch or so I'll make a mark. And then I'm gonna create vertical and horizontal lines. When I'm done with that, I'm going to number the top from left to right, one through eight, and number the left side from the top to the bottom one through eight and that's going to help me transcribe my design on my canvas from my grid reference as soon as your grid is transcribed on there what you're going to do is basically how this process works is you don't draw the whole image you draw just the contour lines that you see in each individual square so here on square one at the halfway point and at the border between square one and two at the top here at the halfway point tip of the ear comes in at this angle. That's all I draw is the tip of the ear. And then if I say, oh, the ear comes down to here, then I just draw that part of the curve. I do this the whole way through until the entire image is duplicated across the canvas. Okay, when you have that on there where you're satisfied, you will have finished step one. So for the next part of this, I'm going to lean into my number eight Cambridge Bright. What you're looking for is a bright brush that has a mix of hog bristles and synthetic filaments that's very stiff and scratchy. I really like this one, but it doesn't have to be this exact one. I'm going to get my brush wet, and I'm going to come in and put some of the distant, out-of-focus fur in. And to begin the mix for the fur, surprisingly enough, we're going to use a lot of orange. So I'm going to come into my cad yellow and my cad red i'll get a bit of my burnt sienna and we're going to be making a ton of distant orange Maybe a little more red it's going to be going on out of focus kind of here in the background i'm going to just make short upward strokes and you can see the stiffness of the brush it really just kind of lends itself to some fur it just does that, that's just how that brush is but you can do this sort of feather feathering with any good stiff brush. Now, as I come forward, there's a little more brown in the mix. Here at the corner. And again, these are distant, kind of not as in focus areas of fur, which is great because you can kind of begin to practice maybe some of that effect without having to get into the whole little fox here there we go just some a little bit and i may just above him kind of create a little bit of our black and brown again come in sort of from the back just so we can really see those edges does that make sense mm -hmm. of where his little fur is it might also be nice to get a little black and brown together. And just right here, 
Boom. Kind of pulling that in. Just flick out those little shadows. Because this would be in shadow. You can see I'm just making short brush strokes going back. Talking about those shadows along that part of him. There's also kind of a run of them. So right here is a bit in shadow. And even over here, subtle little things. And come into my brown and yellow and cad red. You can always bring the fur around the sides if you want to. Mm -hmm. That's okay. So then we just have a light value here that's a little out of focus that we've got to deal with. We will have done our out of focus fur, Don. Mm, yeah. So let's take this fur mix right here and get our Naples yellow kind of into it. Nice little, little event effect. I'm going to very softly, this much lighter. Little run of fur. And again, ah, uh, very in focus. Distant and blurry. Because we're gonna have just more thought out fur as we come forward and do the focus of his face and especially like in his eyes. Guess what that is? Step two. two. So as I'm going to come forward, there's a couple of things that I've got to do, and I have to do them in certain orders so that the fur will layer very, very well. And one of the things that I want to do is come into the ears here. I'm going to get a little black, maybe a little brown. I need it to be dark and gray, but a dark, dark value, right? And I'm going to come right in here. And I'm going to make sure. And I have this very dark face here because when I come back over it with other fur, I'm going to need it. The other place that I've got this kind of wonderful little bit of fur, I'm going to come here, really lo load up my brush. Then my number eight Cambridge still, I'm doing these kind of like upward flicking strokes so that the bristles of the brush. Kind of go outward, right? Mm hmm. If I need to come inside my ear line a little bit and then I can put the little lip in. I will do that. It's just about getting that little edging. Because that's what it is, is a little edging. Now, once that's done, I'm going to come in and get a little bit of my white on here. And just on the inside of there, just talk about just a little bit of that light fur. If I may, mm -hmm. which I think I may. And I may come back and kind of work it out again, but I want to get into my yellow, which is my just a little bit of my red and yellow and some of my Naples for the edge of this part of the ear here. So I'm here. Got lint. Sometimes <laughs> lint happens. Similar color right here to the edge. And I may even come back with my dark value a bit as I need to because I've got a layer in. But first, a bit of white into that mix. I'm here, same thing. Looks good. Looks okay. We're doing all right, right? Mm-hmm. All right, rinse out very, very well. Make sure all the pigment is out of your brush. And I'm going to kind of come back the opposite direction to where I was before. 
a bit of my gray fur. Might even pull a little blue into it to be whimsical. Brush is dry. Sometimes we don't think about things like, oh, I could use my blue to be whimsical. You don't go, oh, fox, gotta get really whimsical. But you do. Yeah. Whimsical hmm? fox. Foxes need to be whimsical. I think so. Playful, joyful, all those things. Back into my dark black. They're a curious creature. Always Deep wondering. That part of the air. They are curious, but also shy. Always They're wondering. like Audi when it gets weird. Yeah. Like, my main survival thing is leaving. <laughs> when it gets weird. What does the fox say? I'm out of here. <laughs> That's right. That's looking pretty good. Now we can come back in and kind of like an interesting opposite layer. So there's the cream little fur that we've got going on coming inside the ear. And it's going to even bring some across here and like I take the brush on its side and pull it in and then I'm going to curve those brush strokes up a bit. For that fur. Right here. So we still have our dark shadow, right? But we've got that other fur. Now I'm going to get into my yellow some and into my red some. And always temper it with brown. And let's put in some darker than what we've used inner ear fur. Up to the tip. Kind of coming in from the black guard hairs. And bring it around. It's just kind of miraculous when you get it. It's like, boom, ear. Mm. But sometimes when you're looking at fur, it's very hard to go, where does the layering go? Right? How do I, how do I do brush directionality where I brush up and over? Right? So I come up the side of the ear and I'm brushing up. And then I come across and I layer those. I know when to. Bring this part of the hair up into the ear. And come right here. And I'm not even done. Got one more little thing I've got to do. This is great. This is wonderful, but I want, I'm going to wipe out my brush. I'm going to take a little more of my red and yellow. I can tone that with some brown. You see this darker value, this sort of richer inside there happening. Bring that down. Come here. And it's again very, very similar. And I bet it just seems I bet this seems like brighter and a surprise. Mm, I like oh, how that. I hope it's a surprise. I like the fur. You like the what? I like how his fur is coming in. All right. Let's call that step three. Mm. 
Like we got some ears in the top of his head in, and we're having a lovely time, aren't we? We are. So now, because this hair has certain directionality and sweeps over other layers, I've got to do under the eye on his little hair there. Okay. I'm going to take my brown out and put a lot of cat red into it. All right, that's a pretty rustic brown. My yellow. That's good. I'm going to come under the eye. Zoom in over your shoulder. I'm bringing this below the tail because I've got to layer the tail over it. You can always bring some of this up here. It's amazing how you can take, in, especially in fur, colors to a few different locations to create unification. Mm -hmm. It's important. I'm gonna rinse out. And I need to let that dry for a minute. Make sure I have enough on there, though. I'm looking and I'm like worried that I've got it far enough down, even with the, the tail coming up. That's what I'm trying to do is make sure that even with the tail coming up, this is brushed far enough down that we're going to be good with it. Now up over his head, we're going to get into our yellow a bit more. It has a bit of our red in it. It does. But these are more in these ranges, and sometimes we're going to even add a little Naples yellow to it. So you can see we got those three. And I love loosely mixing it. You can see the S curve of the stroke, right? Mm hmm So lovely. But I love when you look at these um, wonderful, amazing creatures. Mm -hmm. Is like certain little things about them are true, like the way that their little faces have that little diamondy shape. Oh yeah, that's a true thing, right? Get a little more red into here. My brown. Be really strong with it right here. Just a little bit of this as I go through. I'm going to wipe my brush out of its pigment. I'm going to do a couple interesting things. I'm going to get some white. My brush isn't completely clean. This is the trick of this. <laughs> my brush isn't completely clean. Now I'm going to add some of that, those little white tip guard hairs that are happening right here.
There we go. Just picking up. It's a lighter color, but it isn't, you know, the fur has these like lighter hairs and darker hairs sort of mixed in with each other. The other place you kind of see this is a bit under here. See, I'm just dry brushing that through just a little bit. I don't want to take away my dark value. I'm just trying to imply that we've got a little bit of that going on there. And the last thing, interestingly, that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, I rinsed out my brush really, really well. I'm going to take my brown and my black. Very lightly, add some of these little darker bits of hair, if you can see what I'm doing, especially down the center here, where they would blend in. You can see they're kind of softening and blending into that. From the corner of his eye, kind of sweeping out where this fur goes, I'm adding a dark run of fur. And then up over his eye, a bit here as we come down the nose. I've got to lighten it, but that's where we're going to get. Yeah. So let's call that that whole step we're going to say we're good there mm -hmm. we got that and we're ready to go on to what's next okay all right on step five we're going to continue to i'm i'm sure you've guessed this by now <laughs> more fur. Fur. <laughs> there's gonna be more fur <laughs> what's next more fur Go ahead and take some of my brown and my cad yellow, and that makes a very nice basis for also kind of a fur color, and get a little white into it. And right here, I'm going to sit there and say some of that could be coming this direction, and right there at the tear duct, we could get a little bit coming there. Into the richer one here. And you can see I'm brushing up, I brush in the direction that the fur grows. Hmm. This is also important. Also very, very important. So that is the brown and the yellow ochre, right? We're going to come up here. Now, his nose is an interesting thing. There is a bit of it that will go like that. That kind of like goes back over that and then up the center. You guys can see that right there. Yeah. I'm going to get into my red and yellow fur again because we like it. Add that into there. Mr. Foxy Fox. He's so foxy. it back into this wonderful sort of off color for the lighter fur right so in the center bit and then also some of this here That's lovely. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Right? You kind of seeing him come to. Guess what we get to do next? What's that? Foxtail! Mm. <laughs> Which we're in a good space for. So I'm going to take my yeah. burnt sienna and my nice cad yellow. They make a very neutral color. You can even, if you need to deepen them, get some gray into it. And let's start 
bringing his tail across. Always come in, get different, and a little lighter. And you can see I'm just talking about the different directions of Mr. Fuzzy's tail. Mm, Mr. It's got Fuzzy. a lot going on in his tail. Right. It's not a small, a small thing, right? I'm going to rinse out a bit. I'm going to take a little of my black and brown. And we're going to speak a little of the guard hairs that foxes have going on. And it's really interesting that you really see this the way the tail is, so you know that the underside is a bit lighter. Right, where he's kind of got it against his nose. Yeah. And you're just going to bring these darker values through there. Now I may need some more black. I'm going to take a bit of this black onto this brush. I'm going to do an interesting couple of things. I'm going to make sure that we've got a nice line there. A line there, because that's super important. And I can come back with other stuff, but I have to put this part of it in now. And then add these dark values to in the hair. See it? Isn't that fun? Yeah, it did. I'm going to peek more over your shoulder there. Oh, I'm there. doing a lot of S-curves. A lot of arabesques and a lot of, well, not as many arabesques, but a lot of S-curves and calligraphy marks. Marks that have that feeling to them. Mm -hmm. And that's wonderful, right? We love it. It's wonderful. But I also want to make sure that I have a nice bit of drama in my white first. I'm going to come back with just one more layer of that. And since I've got that color kind of already there, that neutral white, I can for sure. And if, if I do get water, I want to get just the smidgiest. Like I barely dip the brush in water because I still want kind of a dry brush effect. I don't want to paint out my black guard hairs. I'm just shading some of what's happening here. Let's look that up. See what we're doing? I see. That's fun stuff. And then we can even kind of imply that some of this maybe is present down here just a bit if we go too far with it guess what we do come back with black come back with black but you know you know what it gets mm. better every time i was gonna say actually it looks pretty good the tail came in fast the tail does come in fast it really does but you can always come in with your black fur and be like, oh, no. Yeah, actually pretty. I'm pretty thrilled with that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Okay, so what we've got left, my friends, is the eyes. Best yes. part of the whole thing, right? Whole thing. Whole thing. We come back, and we'll do the eyes. Now we're going to finish out this baby with a number four round. I'm going to grab one of my number four rounds. It just gives me a nice point. And we're beginning to put in the details of the eyes. I'm going to get my brush wet and into my black. And I'm going to come here and into the tear duct. Mm. And up here. And you'll see that I kind of flick these out almost like lashes. Things we're going to exaggerate today. <laughs> Bring this in here. 
Because on him as well, you know, this comes down a little bit below the eye and is darker and all of that. So I like that part of it. You're not actually giving him eyelashes. You're just exaggerating what is functionally there. Well, he does have eyelashes. Well, he does, actually. But this reminds me more of, like, Twix's guard hair. <laughs> We have a dog, and she has, like, these extremely long hair, like, near her lashes that look like lashes, but I think are some kind of weird evolutionary guard hair. Well, she's a hairy dog, not a furry dog. That's right. She is a hairy dog, not a furry dog. I don't, does a fox, a fox has fur, though. Fox has fur. That's right. I'm going to paint in those points on the eyes. Exaggerate those, right? Those are fun. I'm going to come in with a little bit of my blue and black. Surprisingly? Yes, surprisingly. Because when I add the reflections into where the tear ducts are, that's going to really help that exaggerate. I'm going to take my yellow and my red and make a very bright orange and kind of get my burnt sienna involved in that. Into that glowing little orb. And another little glowing little orb, right? My brown and my black together. Come up over the top and shade that eye. Lids tend to cast a, a lot more shadow than we think. Run that in there. On that there. So what we're doing is we're trying to keep where the, the eye would be highlighted a bit out there. I come in with my my black. I wasn't sure if you went up to his ears. Bring this down some. This is, uh, this painting's, what does the fox see? What does the fox see? He sees something. He sees something. He sees you in some kind of way. <laughs> I think it's important to kind of, I like to have the amber in there, but we don't want to, you know, it too much. Just a bit there. And again, I always like to come through and this again can exaggerate that part of the eye. As artists, sometimes the exaggeration it's kind of our friend. Sometimes not. Sometimes we don't want to do that as artists, and that's okay, too. Mm -hmm. I need to let this dry for just a second, and the reason being that I'm going to put a very specific reflection on there. While I'm waiting for that reflection to happen, I'm going to take my black and my blue together and quite a lot of white. Come to the inside here. 
light that inside a little oh, a bit. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, maybe add even more of a blue reflection in here, a little deeper. There we go. Doing that. And come across the top with this sort of sky blue reflection that's happening. There that is. Make sure I don't get any on there that I don't mean. I'm going to grab my bright, bright white. See how that's looking. Does the fox say something? I think so. Peekaboo. A little bit of a lovely little foxy day, isn't it? If I need to come in, I can always kind of mellow that out. That got a little gray for me. Sometimes I'll be like, that's just too bright. And I'll come back and be like, nope, shape it, shape it, shape it, shape it. Because you can do that. And tone that back a bit. So I think that's uh, I think that's what he says. Yeah. The C's. I think we Those did are it. Pretty Let's amazing. It. It's a fun day. Mm. What a fun for a day. What a fun for a day for us to have. I feel. I love it. Now this is gonna be one of those rare times, and I'm gonna sign in red. I'm only doing this because I thought it actually would be pretty in combination on this particular canvas. Yeah, I think it really is. I think just to always sign red, I don't really do that. Because it wouldn't always work for the composition. Mm -mm. But there we go. Look at that. We, we furred that fast. We wow. furred so fast. We furred so fast. Fox. We got to paint the fox today, and I think it was fun, and I hope you had fun. I think fur... It's one of those delightful textures and techniques that we can take on that even kind of lightens our spirit. His sweet face, everything about him, just a joy. I hope you loved learning how to paint him. Now, as I mentioned, you're welcome to do one, but I would love to entice you to come back and join us for the next painting in the series, this really dramatic woman under a hat. I think you're really going to like it. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye. Do you remember what step we're on? No. <laughs> the end step. The last step. Done. That's what step we're on. We finished. They know because the numbers will have gone by. That's true. Because <laughs> what John Evans, he's going to put the numbers in. I don't really. I just painted the painting and taught it to you. I can't wait to see everybody's painting. I'm so excited about this. How, I just like, I just like, squee.